Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to the Rotowire Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Scott Jensen, joined as always by Andrew Laird. We are the uh, the DFS version on Friday. It's week 17, believe it or not. We uh, we made it. There were there were times where we weren't totally sure, but the NFL has uh, has pushed through pretty well and actually done pretty well in terms of games the last like six or seven weeks. So, uh, Andrew, how are you? We've uh, we're at the end of the regular season. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny. We were talking last week. Uh, we recorded early because of Christmas, and we we're like, doesn't seem like it's going to be that crazy of a week. They're not any big news. And then it seemed like by the time Sunday rolled around, we had all these different issues. Uh, we're doing this Friday, obviously a little less time in between and yep. goodness it's uh, there are going to be some names we've never mentioned before. And <laughs> For sure. you're going to see guys uh, on the player pool that people are going to have. You're like, Oh, I didn't know that guy was in the league, but yep. that's uh that's week 17. Yeah. So week 17 is, you know, in the NFL is different than the other week, like baseball and basketball, you get like late week, the end of the season's a little, little weird, but Week 17 in the NFL, I mean, you have teams that clinch, you have teams that have to win, you have teams that are totally out of it. Um, it seems this year we have a lot more team, a lot less teams that like clinched playoff spots than normal. There's only there's only three teams in the AFC that have clinched the playoffs, which is crazy in Week 17. There's four in the NFC, so there's a lot of a lot of open spots. There's not a lot, there's not a lot of teams going for those open spots in the AFC. It's pretty much five for four in the NFC. It's like four for three, but um, there's a lot of teams that have to win to get in. There's a lot of teams that have clinched and like their seating is still up in the air. So uh, week 17, just a, a couple of things. First of all, uh, you know, team, it, the tough part, the toughest part for me, I think is teams that have clinched playoff spots, but like only seating is at, at risk. And you wonder, uh, you know, how much they're going to play guys. Kansas city's made it easy on us. They're, they're resting all their starters. Pittsburgh's made it easy on us. They're sitting banned. Those are easy situations, but you know, you can get teams like Buffalo and Tampa Bay and green Bay, and New Orleans who like, if they win and someone else loses, could move up. And uh, those teams are tough for me because you just don't know, A, you know, if they're going to play their guys. And then, B, if they get up at all, like it's an easy, you know, pull the starters at halftime kind of thing. Yeah. And the I think the one thing that I go in with is is teams that have nothing to play for uh, are still perfectly fine to play. Like, Agreed. Um, Agreed. These guys, like, they play for these contracts. Uh, the, the idea – I mean, the – the number one pick has been decided thanks to the Jets being the hottest team in football. So, like, there's no more, like, tanking. On fire. Yeah. The uh, the difference between, like, the third and the seventh pick in the NFL, like, really isn't that different, especially in right. this draft. Like, I don't think people, you know, there's, I, I forget which team it was that uh, they can still finish between four and nine or something like that. But it's like, you're not going to lose a game just so you can move from seven to five. Like, it, so I think there are at least, it, like, uh, a lot of times we see uh, teams tanking and we're like, we want to stay away from them because they don't care. But like that actually doesn't feel like it's a consideration in the NFL. I say that easily on Friday and I'm sure we'll <laughs> see teams give up on Sunday. But yeah, it's the 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 toughest one is uh, how how long are guys going to play if if they're ahead? And um, hopefully the getting ahead is you already got your fantasy right. points. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, I mean, you, you have those teams that are winning in. You're like, oh, well, that's easy. That's easy to go this week. But like, if you look at Cleveland, if they're up, you know, 21, nothing at halftime, like, do they think about sitting guys? Like how, how far are you in that game? You feel comfortable that you can like sit everybody and get ready for the week after knowing that you made the playoffs. And, um, but like I said, I think the teams that are hardest for me are Buffalo, Tampa, Green Bay, New Orleans, Seattle, the teams I have to hear that haven't said they're resting anybody. Um, you know, Sean McDermott, Buffalo said the stars are playing, but like, does that mean a half? Does that mean it depends on what's happening in the Steelers game? The NFL does a good job of like making sure all the games that affect each other are playing at the same time. We got a, a big gr- group in the morning, a big group in the afternoon. Um, you know, so you're not only, it's not only if you're winning your game, but it's how someone else is doing it in their game. So it's a, uh, it's tough in those situations. I think I'm focusing on the you know the teams that have to win with the thought that you know even any kind of close game they're leaving guys in, um, or teams that aren't playing for anything. Like you mentioned, um, you know teams that aren't playing for anything they're still playing their games. Guys want to put up stats, which is great for us. The only way that you know I think that affects a little bit is if someone tweaks something in the first quarter. I think they're much less likely to come back in in week 17 there anyway. But there's no way for us to predict that or quantify that. But like if a if a quarterback on a team that doesn't need to win or you know is out of it, you know tweaks his ankle in the first quarter. Um, you know, the, the tough it out or, uh, you know, come back in probably goes away in week 17 because it's, uh, you know, it's vacation time. Yes. And speaking of the schedule, we don't we haven't had one like this at all this season. Like it's pretty much split between yeah, the early fun. and later slate. So um, if you have two guys that you think are basically the same and you want to just flip a coin, uh, if one of them is playing the late game, roster that guy, because that the, <laughs> the late swap possibilities <laughs> we were talking just before yeah. we started recording about late swap in NBA. Um, but like. 
in NFL, uh, it works just the same, but thankfully we only have one uh, or two times you have to worry about. But uh, the, fl- the flexibility that you'll have using that late player that you can use to either swap to somebody else if you're behind or to block if you're ahead, like um, that, that should absolutely be like a tiebreaker between players this week. Yeah, no, I fully agree there. And we've got we got some good games in the afternoon too. And there you got you got uh, you know that uh, the Cardinals Rams game where it's a win and in kind of game for both of those teams. You know, whoever wins that game can get it. Whoever loses it could be in trouble depending on what the Bears do. But uh, you know, we got this, and Seahawks Niners are later on. Saints Panthers. There's a lot of uh, Titans Texans, which is the highest uh, highest total on the slate too, is in the afternoon. So it's uh it's one of those days that uh, you know you're not going to know how you've done by the first set of games ending where you usually have a pretty good idea. But we mentioned teams that have to win to get in. You got Cleveland. Cleveland, Miami, Baltimore, the Bears, the Rams, Arizona, and Tennessee, all teams that if they win, they get in the playoffs. And then the outside looking in, you have Indy who needs to win and then kind of have somebody else lose. And it's funny because the Rams in Arizona, Arizona, if they lose, they're out, but they're playing the Rams. So if they win, it directly gets them in. So it's like they they essentially need to win in the Rams to lose, but you know they take care of that in one game. So they're, they're a winning in team too. And then you get the Giants in Dallas who need to win, but then they need to have Washington lose on Sunday night, which is the one game off the slate. We have a 15-game slate on you know FanDuel and DraftKings as the main slate. So it's a huge one. But the Giants in Dallas, you I mean they're playing that game to win because you just don't know what's going to happen. You know, the, the, the Washington football team, I almost messed it up in week 17. Um <laughs> We don't. Dwayne Haskins is no longer on the team, which is wild considering wild. they drafted him last year. Alex Smith is kind of up in the air. You know, we may get uh, who who knows who's going to quarterback that game for for Washington. So, the Giants and Dallas. I think Giants are the team that, by the way, that you mentioned that could either like be the five pick or make the playoffs, which is crazy. Like the swing with them this week is, is pretty wild. But there are a ton of teams need to win to get in. It's going to be a, a wild, fun week of. Uh, games and scoreboard watching so i'm i'm looking forward to it it's uh, it should be fun we've got holidays behind us uh we can focus on on some nfl on sunday i mean six wins to win a division is just nuts absurd like i always thought like you know maybe uh, it's gonna be gross when one of those teams went to eight games yeah. and wins the division we we might have a sit that's six is really hard when they played they all play each other twice it's like hard for someone not to get up to seven or eight, but uh, oh, six wins would be just gross. And it's funny we mentioned you know teams that like only seedings in, fa- in play, but you look at Tampa Bay and like if they win, they get the five seed, and like that's major. Like you essentially are gonna win the next game. I mean, who knows in the <laughs> NFL? But like if you can play the <clears throat> NFC East in Week One, you know you have to go on the road if you're the five, six, or seven seed. But if you can go on the road and play, you know Dallas or the Giants or Washington, like that is a huge difference from playing one of those one of those better teams if you, it, it's different playing one of those teams and playing seattle in seattle Orleans, i think yeah like, that's massive like that's a huge difference going into week one and you know you got to win three times you probably have to win three road games is that five six or seven teams less you know there's another upset in there but um you know getting that fc east team is, is a pretty significant step there and i think that uh, i think the tampa is gonna definitely want to win this game yeah for sure um the the weird thing is is that i feel like we have uh, like the expensive players we probably want are in the games that count the most, which yep. you could almost make the argument might be the tighter ones because they are, you know, the games between two teams that are out of it could at least be a little more like free flowing and, you know, nobody yeah. wants to get hurt, but like, you know, they're still trying and everything, but yeah. Um, prime example. You look at Houston and Cincinnati last weekend. Exactly. I mean, two, two teams are what have seven wins combined between them. They went to 37, 31 with stats everywhere. Like that's, that's the kind of game in DFS. Like we're like, Oh my God, Cincinnati, Houston, who cares? But I mean, those are huge games. Those are games care. that the counts, the stats count just as much. Like you said, they're a lot more free flowing teams are going to, those teams aren't punting on fourth down. We're like, who cares? Like you just, you want to go and, and score. And I mean, that turned into a huge back and forth, but with 68 point game. So that's a, it's a prime example right there. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, there are guys all over the salary spectrum, obviously, but we we do have a few uh, kind of lower price ones that are in games that don't matter that, um, you know, maybe they get some extra opportunities and just because who cares? So, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah and you, you'll have some teams that probably, you know, second half, maybe, you know, see what a rookie can do and that kind of stuff. And that's gonna be hard to predict, too. But um, so let's ju- let's jump into the slate. We have the, the one game that's off slate. We mentioned Washington and Philly do play on Sunday night. So that one we will not discuss. But. Um, you got some high totals. We have five games that are over 50. We have Green Bay, Chicago. Tennessee, Houston is a 56 point over under. Uh, Minnesota, Detroit, mostly because Detroit's defense is just horrendous. And, you know, I think Minnesota has the second highest implied team total in the slate. I think it's Tennessee and then Minnesota, if I remember from looking. Um, Atlanta, Tampa's 50 and a half. Uh, Vegas and Denver's 51. So we have a. Uh, 
We have plenty of games to choose from if you want a game stack something over 50 this week. You know, last week it was really meager in that regard on the 10 game slate, but uh, there are plenty of high scoring games, at least on the Vegas totals this weekend. Um, or if they're not high scoring games, you've got high scoring implied team totals. So, yeah. like, there's, I have, uh, I didn't update this this morning, but I have uh, the Colts ahead of the Vikings in terms oh, okay. of team oh, totals. Oh, that's, yeah. They're playing Jacksonville 14 points, right? right. So that, that makes sense. So, <laughs> But uh, yeah, you've got uh, the top three: Tennessee, Minnesota, and uh, and uh, and Indy. That's a that's an interesting grouping of t- t- considering two of those are like kind of big spread games. I guess uh, yeah, I guess all three of them are because Tennessee's favorite big over Houston too. Yeah, uh, we got some low total games this week though. We have some really we have really a, we low. have a thirty we have a thirty nine point five this week, which I don't think I've seen um, since like you know a couple of years ago at least. We have it's just been so few uh, games under forty. Uh, Jets and Patriots thirty nine and a half. Um, you know, Jets defense is just so dominant right now that you just you can't score on them. So, uh, you know, why even try? Right. I mean, um, yeah, it's basically the Patriots. Just, against just, the 85 ask, Bears. just ask the Browns. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we got we got uh, Steelers Browns at 42 Baltimore Cincy, 44 and a half Miami Buffalo, 44 and a half. And uh, funny enough, Chargers Chiefs at 44. Um, I didn't think we'd have mentioned the Chiefs as the low toll games anytime all year, but obviously Patrick Mahomes is not playing. Tyreek and Kelsey probably aren't going to play also, so that's uh, just a complete year. And you got, uh, when you got Chad Henney playing quarterback, it tends to affect how Vegas thinks the game will turn out. <laughs> I'd say so. Yeah, I mean, um, I think that's one of those situations where you're, it's, you, you want to convince yourself like, oh, it's still the Chiefs, like, you, you know, and he's cheap and all these like, just stay away from that game. Do yourself a favor. Yeah, and that's a, that's a team that, uh, you know, obviously just wants to get to get to the bye week and kind of rest up. Uh, just for the record, I hate resting starters when you have the bye week. You think, I think it's too it's much a, of a break? I think it's a horrible decision when you have the bye week. That's that's three full weeks between games. I think that's too much. I think you pretty much uh, – you guarantee the first half of your first game is going to be a little rusty. And I just right. – uh, the Chiefs can probably get away with that. Um, and they're, they're they're so good that they're – you know, whoever they play in that first round, they're probably going to be um, pretty decent favorites at home. And, you know, Mahomes will probably get it going. But I uh, – especially a team that – in the Chiefs that all three of their playoff games last year, they sucked early in those games. Yeah. They were bad in the first half of – all three games last year. I mean – they were down in the fourth quarter, the Niners in the Super Bowl, but like the game against uh, Tennessee, they were way behind. Um, I think it was a game against Indy, maybe the week I, the week before. I forget who they played, but um, you know, as a team that struggled early in playoff games last week, uh, I don't I don't like resting everybody. I, I would have gone at least a half with all the starters. How did that playoff run go for them? Pretty well, pretty well. <laughs> I wouldn't want to bet on getting behind twenty one nothing every week and then coming back. I get the Chiefs can do it. I get Andy Reid knows his team so much better than I do. I just, I, there, there's been so many situations where teams did that and really struggled in the first half of that, that first game. And I just think it's a dangerous situation to kind of rely on, you know, getting out the rust uh, in game where yeah. the, you know, the chiefs are so talented and so quick scoring, they can do it, but uh, just not something I do. I, I'd play those guys the first half. Of That's fair. And he didn't call me and ask me though. I was kind of surprised. Usually, usually we talk on Thursdays, but he yeah. didn't talk to me. <laughs> Holiday must have uh, messed him up. Yeah, I'm sure. So let's jump into, uh, let's jump into running backs. Um, we have a couple of uh, big name, high price guys at the top. Obviously, um, Dalvin Cook is not playing this week. He has a family emergency, so he's off the slate. Um, but Derek Henry and Alvin Kamara. Kamara is ninety five hundred. Henry is ninety four hundred. Uh, Kamara coming off a pretty decent game last week. Just got fined five thousand dollars for his shoes. But I'm guessing that uh, with the six touchdowns, one hundred seventy two yards, and fifty six point two fantasy points in PPR. He won a lot of people, a lot of season long leagues last week, but uh, I'm guessing he's not going to care about the 5k for the shoe. And by the way, dumbest fine of all time. Um, Cause it's funny. Cause I was watching that game. I actually paused it and showed my wife his shoes. I'm like, look how cool his shoes are. And she was like, sat down and watched the game for five minutes. So like someone who is not going to watch that game for a minute, sat down for five minutes and watch because the guy's shoes, you're going to find him for it. It's just absurd. But uh, who do you like more between Henry and Kamara this week? Did, uh, before we get there, did you, my immediate response or reaction, I didn't play that slate was 56 points doesn't seem like enough for six <laughs> touchdowns, right? Like, like it's the most touchdown, tied for those touchdowns ever scored in the history of an NFL in a game. Like, right. I would have thought that he would have had more than like, and I think he had like 15 more points than Devontae Adams and Stephon Diggs. And like, I would have thought like there'd be a different, you break, you tie the record for the most touchdowns ever. Right. So you would have thought like it would be more of a difference maker, but obviously a huge game, but there were so many big games like you could have survived without them. Like in season long, I saw some leagues where, you know, Devonte Adams and Stefan Diggs got people over Alvin Kamara. But uh, yeah, it seemed like uh, maybe for a record setting, maybe it would have been a 70 point game or something. And you had the bonus, like the hundred yard bonus. Yeah. Like it was a, when I saw the six touchdowns, I honestly thought like maybe he was getting close to 70. Yeah. And then when I saw 56, I was like, Oh, well, whatever. Um, 
<laughs> like, how do you not play Henry over? Like, how do you play Camaro over Henry? Like, run it, running backs at Houston is uh, something that interests you. It um, I mean, it works every time, right? Like, and it's and he's the best running back in the NFL now. Like, I don't. How do you? How do you? I mean, obviously, you play Camaro because everybody's playing Henry, but right. Um. I don't know. It's kind of weird to see four running backs. Obviously, only two of them are going to be active, but like four running backs at 9,000 or above. Yeah, it is weird. It's funny because we were talking Derrick Henry earlier this week uh, when we were chatting. Christian McCaffrey plus Mike Davis have more PPR points than Derrick Henry. It's by like one or two, but like I was amazed by that stat. Yeah, it shows crazy. you how much how much catching passes, you know, week to week does influence stuff. But Henry was obviously, I mean, they're playing against Houston, who we talked, we've talked all year about how bad Houston's run D is. I mean, Tennessee has to win too, which is which is big. I mean, and you you think that maybe if they get up huge, they sit him with a lead, but it's gonna be a while. I don't think that, I don't think you know twenty one three at halftime is gonna be like let's take Derrick Henry out yet because they're playing Houston, who can score points. Um, you know Deshaun Watson on the other side, so they they can score points. Houston's allowing five point four yards per carry. Um, in week six, Derrick Henry had two hundred twelve yards rushing, two touchdowns against Houston. Samaj P Ryan and Gio Bernard had one hundred and sixty yards and two touchdowns last week against Houston. We talked about it all year. I mean, I, there's not much to talk about here. Houston's defense, run defense is terrible. Derrick Henry's awesome. Um, 9,400, I, I think a lot of people are still going to play Henry, even at the price. What do you think the rushing prop is? The rushing prop's got it. Are you looking at it? No, it, uh, DraftKings and FanDuel don't have them out yet. It's got to be like 135 yards. You think it's that? I was thinking like 125, but like, yeah. how, do you take... <laughs> You did, I, where do you where do you stop? I'm I'm going to uh, the closest state. I'm in. Mean, go ahead and bet it then. Right. Like where do you where do you not take the over? About one. I don't think I can take an over over like one forty. That's like, what I did. Yeah, one thirty nine and a half. That's a lot of rushing yards. But I mean, they got killed last week by Green Bay, and he somehow had twenty three carries. Mm-hmm. Like, they just don't go away from him. Like the only way they go away from him is if they're up. 28 nothing at halftime and they're like okay well, we got this and, and even then i think it's be like middle of the third quarter before they right. really yank him out so um you know he's not he's got set what he has he has 1777 yards um so i don't think they're gonna try and push him for 2000 like you kind of you kind of had the outskirts they're like he go for 223 and gets 2000 i don't think they're gonna do that with the playoffs uh, kind of coming up assuming they're winning um so I, there's a lot of like t- spots in there people go for like big round numbers and stuff i don't think they'll quite push that but if he has 170 yards at halftime they might I was going to say, it's it's going to be like what everyone talks about when he breaks off an 83-yard run yeah, in the first exactly. quarter. Yeah. And which, like, oh. is, which Houston gives up seemingly every game, even, <laughs> even to your boy David Montgomery. Who I get, we can't make fun of David Montgomery anymore. He's like every week he's awesome. So it's uh, – anyway, I, I have to find a new running back to make fun of. Right. No, I um I think the, the toughest part with uh, Henry is where you – like the cheap players you're going to have to play to fit it around him because – there, I, there are plenty of running backs to play this week, and you yeah, don't have I like to pay a lot, up for I like a lot of guys in the 7,000s, too. There's like three guys I love in that range, too. There are so few, it's going to be tough. I, I like a few cheaper ones even then from there. And so, um, like cash games, I will always play three running backs, and there are definitely three you know, tons that you can play this week. Um, and playing Henry um, not only means you can't play one of the cheaper ones, but um, you got to find – one of your 3K special wide receivers who yep. can get me 12 points. Yeah, we got a lot of those this week. There's a, and then The running backs, there's there's three guys in the 4,000s that we're going to talk about. So it's like, this is a week where, you know, usually we're like, oh, we got cheap running back at 5,500, and maybe you get a guy in the 4,000s who kind of breaks in there with injury. But we have three guys at least who I have highlighted that we're going to talk about in the 4,000s. So there's a, there's a lot of different ways you can get cheap this week. So I think that's going to help people get Henry in even more than, than in their regular week. Right. So if, if you're thinking about ownership projections for Henry, you just have to use Henry plus one of the 4,000 guys. Like one of those guys is going to end up being a popular one. Yeah, I think I know who it's going to be, unfortunately. <laughs> the one I like the most. But uh, let's jump into the 7,000s. There are three guys in here that uh, that I do I do like. One uh, one more than most, it's probably Jonathan Taylor this week. Um, they, the Colts have to win. They're playing Jacksonville. Jacksonville's allowed um, four 90-plus yard rushers in the last five weeks, and Derrick Henry had a 215 in there. Um, Jacksonville's allowing 220 total yards to running backs per game the last five weeks. It's just – they are they're awful. They want to lose. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter anymore. They have the they have the number one seed locked up, but it's not like there's something going to flip a switch and be good. Um, he's been a top fifteen running back the last five weeks. Five rushing touchdowns the last three weeks. He had scored twice against Steelers last week. He uh, still splits time. Naheem Hyde touches the ball too, but like, they're letting him they're letting him touch the ball a good amount. It's a great matchup. 
Um, they'll ride him as long as they, you know, get up to the point where they need to take him out. But I think that uh, Jonathan Taylor is a really good play this week at 7,400. Yeah, I think he's the next guy that people go to after Henry. I do, like, I do too. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think I'm breaking any news there. I think he's gonna be pretty popular. Too. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's just a matter of whether you try to play. I don't, I don't think many people are gonna play Henry and Taylor. Like, I think it just really handicaps you elsewhere. Um, so that's, that's the lineup I'd like to play with and see how I can, how I can fit it in. But it, it does get tough when you got two guys up there. Yeah. Um, and so if that's the case, then I think there's just going to be a lot of two V twos of Taylor and two plus $2,000 that you yep. save from, from Henry. So, um, Austin Eckler looks pretty good against a chiefs team that presumably yep. is not playing. I mean, yeah, when we talk about sitting Mahomes and Kelsey and Hill, like they're gonna, they're, they're like stud defensive players are gonna if they play. You, there's only seven inactive, so you can't inactive everybody. Right. But those guys are either gonna not play very much or come out, and there's gonna be a lot of backups on defense. Also, I mean that's a, you know, that's an important factor. We always talk about the skill players, but like the, you know, Tyron Matthew and all those guys, they're not gonna, and Chris Jones are not gonna play seventy snaps on. on right, right, right. Yeah. Do you have any concern about the Chargers pulling him early because they? I actually, I actually do. I don't think this is a game where he's going to get 20 plus touches. Mm-hmm. I just don't think they're out of it. You know, he's kind of a guy that's been banged up all year long. I don't really think that they, I don't think they feed him a ton. I think this is, it's a week where, you know, Kalen Balaj maybe gets some work. I don't, I don't love Echo this week because I just don't think the chargers are going to push him just based on the way they use him and based on the fact that he's been, he's been so banged up all year. I mean, is there, and they have still have Justin Jackson active. Like he, they, yeah. he's just, young one that they can get going like that. That's my concern about Eckler. Like, um, I Me mean, too. we, we obviously mentioned, or I mentioned earlier, like teams that don't matter can still play, but like that worries me a little bit. Worries, worries me too. I think that they, they just, they, they have options and they, you know, they're playing a team that is going to be, you know, kind of playing like a preseason game. And I think that, that affects the other side a little bit too. I think that, uh, uh, I think Eckler, the, the talent and skill is there. The price is pretty good. I just don't, uh, I don't feel like there's a heavy workload coming, and I, I'm probably going to shift elsewhere in the price range. Is it Nick Chubb? Nick Chubb's interesting because last week, uh, you know, the Jets again started, played well against the run, and um, you know, the Jets had a lead. Like that game was really strange, and uh, Chubb kind of got there. Like I think he had like 19 points, like not what you want at the price, but he scored a touchdown. He had five catches, so he kind of got there a little bit, but. You know, playing against Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh is clearly, you know, not going to – they're going to run some guys out there, but they're starting Mason Rudolph, so it's a clear sign that they are not fully going to this game. And he scored in the last couple of games. He's kind of been quiet the last two weeks. 26 carries for 78 yards are really ugly yards per carry. But um, – and the Steelers are normally good against against running backs, 3.9 yards per carry, but then this is not going to be the same Steelers defense. And, you know, Gio Bernard did, did well against them. Jonathan Taylor did well against them. So maybe, maybe it's just sitting some guys. I think that Chubb at – 7,600 is probably pretty low owned this week uh, coming off the last couple of weeks. And maybe people see Pittsburgh and kind of just go elsewhere. I think Chubb is pretty interesting for a kind of a, a low percentage guy who could, you know, hit a couple big plays. Do you think people go to Kareem Hunt at 5,900 because he's cheaper? Yeah, I think that you say, what, 1,700? I just, I like the security of getting more touches with Chubb. But yeah, Hunt's always very involved and, you know, maybe if they get the the, the Browns are winning that game, maybe they kind of shift away from Chubb. But uh, yeah, I think that the price difference there probably makes people jump there, and that makes me like Chubb a little, even a little more. Can I guess David Johnson's not on your list? God, so it's so funny. We talked about Johnson last week. We're like, oh, where'd the hundred receiving yards come from? So he just goes ahead and doesn't do anything receiving, but rushes for 128 yards last week. Like, great at Cincinnati, but 12 for 128 is a line that I'd never thought we'd see from David Johnson again. But like. 15 touches is what we expected. Yeah. Like we talked about the fact, like those, those receiving that you know, I can touch the ball 20 times again, but I just, I can't believe he did what he did with those carries. Like that's it's so that's, annoying, <laughs> but he's, he, he's 6,800 now. Like I'm not playing him at 6,800. No, like no way. I, I will probably pay for it next week when we're talking uh, playoffs and we'll talk about, we won't talk about David Johnson that's slate, but we'll talk about the fact he burned us again. But um, I don't know. He was 1957. The first game against Tennessee. I'm just, I'm not doing it this week at the price. There's just too many guys in that range I like more. Yeah, agreed. All right. So what do you do with David Montgomery? He's uh, he's 7,700. He's uh, kind of up in this range now. He's been a running back eight or better, a top eight of running backs at five straight weeks. Um, he was good again last week, 23 for 95 and a touchdown, two catches. Uh, he was really good against the Packers in week 12. He had 11 carries for 103 yards. 
This is his sixth straight game facing a, a team that's bottom 10 in yards allowed to running backs. So like the the uh, the schedule gods have been very kind to Dan Montgomery, although he has played very well. I give him credit that. Uh, what do you do with him at 7,700 a game that the Bears have to win to get in? I think this is another, this is going to bring me back to five weeks ago, like before this run where it's like every reason to play Montgomery is there. And I'm just like, yep. I'm not going to do it. Um I think he's just priced in the range now against some guys that I just like more right now. Like I would play, I'd play Taylor and Chubb over him right. and I get it with Montgomery. He's been very, very good, very consistent too, which is, you know, just has him in like a, a couple big games and a couple bad games. He's been just really solid for like almost a month and a half now. Yeah. I just, that price, the, the, the reason he was so attractive is because he was so cheap for a while. Yeah. Uh, obviously he's like earned that price, but um, I think there are guys below. I, I would definitely play Taylor over him. And there are guys cheaper that I think are just worth the, the flyers and the extra money. So speaking of a little bit cheaper, um, what do you do this week with Aaron Jones? He's 7,100. Like the price jumps out. It's like, oh, I'm surprised. I thought he would be like, you know, 7,800, something like that. He was 10 for 94 last week, ran the ball really well, but they got way up. He only played 25 snaps and AJ Dillon came in and scored two touchdowns and won a bunch of people money in the showdown um, because that was the Sunday night game. There was a lot of people uh, screenshotting lineups with with AJ Dillon and them winning a bunch of money on Sunday night. But Jones is obviously really good. Um, The team's good. They have to, they're kind of one of those teams that like could improve their seating. I don't. I find it hard to see the Packers lay down against the Bears, though. It's such a big rivalry that, like, I think they would love to knock them out of the playoffs. But I wonder how much Green Bay will ride him. You know, the Chicago D is, is good. Uh, Dalvin Cook had a really good game against them two weeks. But they're a pretty good defense. Um, and they seem willing to, like, if the game is going strangely or if they're up or down, they seem willing to kind of kind of take it easy on Jones. And that worries me a little bit in a Week 17 situation. But the price is nice for the talent here. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I like always hesitate to play Jones as long as Jamal Williams is healthy. It just seems like as long as Aaron Rodgers is trying to throw touchdown passes <clears> inside <throat> the five, which well, just a, a, a crazy season long. It's just nuts how how much they do it. It's it's really frustrating because you like I always try to look at Jones's touches, and I'm just like that's I look at his touches to justify not playing him because like right. I go into every week just like I know that when they get close Devonte Adams is going to get four targets and if he doesn't get it then they're going to throw to uh, Robert Tanyan and if yep. he doesn't get it then maybe Rodgers runs it in like so I'm just like all right so his last five games 17 15 15 20 and 10 um rushing attempts and I'm like that's not that many uh obviously yep. the 20 kind of sticks out as a whole number but like 90, 130, 69, 145, and 94 rushing yards. Like 90 rushing yards in all but one of those games. It's crazy. Like he just, he does a ton. Like if he ever got it 22 times, like the numbers would be huge. And we've seen some of those games in the past. But the weird thing with Jones is like last year is like he seemed to score every game. Mm-hmm. Like it was, and everybody's like, oh, touchdown regression's coming. My God, has it come? But it's mostly the fact that they just, they're getting Aaron Rodgers stats. He has, Aaron Rodgers has 44 touchdown passes. Yeah. And it's because, I mean, he's had an awesome year. He's probably going to win the MVP, but it's been because on the one yard line, they throw the ball to Adams and Tunyon, and it's just, they do it all the time. Like, we talk about it, joke around about it, but like, if you look at the season long, I mean, it's crazy how many other touchdowns are passes inside the five. Yeah. I think just like every week, he's a great GPP play because yeah, everybody's going to so. look for, for Rodgers and, and Adams. So um, Jones is just very explosive and. Every time he has one of those big games and people win GPPs because they have him, it's like, yeah, that's yep. that's how you can use Aaron Jones. But like for a cash situation, it's just the I just can't get there at that even at that price, which is like good for Aaron Jones. But um, it seems like he's priced in a way where like you have to look at him though, because it's like I thought he'd be higher and I could like kind of toss him out based on a little bit concerned about usage and week seventeen. But they priced him out at seventy one hundred, like he. The talent at that price is uh, it sticks out pretty. Good yeah, like if he was a thousand more on DraftKings, like if he was eighty one and like more than Montgomery and Taylor, yeah. you, you wouldn't think like he didn't deserve to it's be that an, high. It's an excellent pricing job on him. By we talk about them missing some pricing, I think this is an excellent pricing job. It's a spot where it's low enough where you have to think about him, but it makes you think, and I, I like when it's in that spot. Yeah, agreed. So there are two guys I like it in the kind of low right at right at six and then right under six. Is there anybody in the six thousands you really like this week? Because I, um, I don't really find it. Miles Gaskin was really good last week at six five hundred, but he you know he kind of blew up in the second half had a couple big plays and weirdly uh, you know he, he just he was so much better than than uh, than Ahmed in the first half. They gave him all the touches of the second half and 
Josh Jacobs, 6,200. I'm kind of fully away from Josh Jacobs right now. Even he was he was really good against Denver in the first game, the first time they played. But like he looks slow, and the Raiders feel like a team like they were so close to the playoffs. Now they're not in it. Maybe they just you know maybe not quite as fired up to play. But um, is there anybody in the six thousands you're really strongly considering? Um, DeAndre Swift, maybe. Yeah, he's well, he's he's sixty three hundred. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say like strongly considering, but like he makes sense, right? Like home against Minnesota, like it's, maybe. Yeah, he does. I just like uh, I worry about fully number of touches. I mean, he had twenty two weeks ago, but he had ten. What he had fourteen last week and eleven the week before that. I just don't know if they want to fully ride him in this game, but. It's a good situation. Like Minnesota's gonna score, Detroit's gonna have to score back, and they, you know, they're a mess right now. I mean, they got absolutely drilled last week. Like that was an embarrassing performance against Tampa Bay. Like when Tom Brady throws for whatever is three forty eight and four touchdowns and can sit the second half, like yeah. that doesn't happen in the NFL where guys just like literally take the second half off in a non week seventeen situation. But um, I don't know. I just think the team, team's a mess. I'm, I'm not getting there with Swift this week. But yeah, he's a, he's a guy that's in consideration at least. He has five targets in six of his last seven. Yeah, that's nice. Including each of his last five. Um, could you call him a poor man's James Robinson? Uh, probably not a poor man's because he paid a lot more money in the draft than James Robinson did. No, that's did. true. Uh, but yeah, I mean, kind of the same situation. I just wish that there was, uh, there was the usage that we had from Robinson all year. But uh, the targets are nice. He doesn't do anything with them. He doesn't have over 30 yards receiving the last three games. He has four for 26, four for 15, four for 25. I just... I don't know. The touchdowns are there, like the team to use them in the red zone, but I just I'm not seeing like that the kind of this is the ceiling with Swift that I that I kind of want. That's fair. So right below him though, we've got uh, we have Jeff Wilson at six thousand. Who um, there's been like two games where he's been active and Raheem Mostert has not been active, and he's been absolute monstrous <laughs> in both those games. Uh, obviously, it's the Niners. I watched the game last week, and I was like, wow, Jeff Wilson's going crazy right now. But he had 183 yards rushing last week, 22 carries, also caught a touchdown pass. The Niners did not run it well against Seattle in week eight. And Seattle's kind of one of those teams that like, could improve their seeding, could get all the way to the one seed if Green Bay and New Orleans lose, which is probably not going to happen. But, um, you know, Seattle's going to be playing, playing for something. But uh, the Niners has only had 48 rush yards against Seattle the first time. Uh, they do run the ball really well, especially with George Kittle back. Um, I think Wilson's going to be pretty popular at 6,000. Uh, the volume is certainly there. You think he's a lot higher than Ronald Jones? Yeah, significantly higher than Jones. Because of Fournette? Uh, just because of the big game, and I think people don't trust Ronald Jones very much. Okay, that's fair. Um, because, like, if Ronald Jones gets the Ronald Jones touches he was getting earlier of the yeah. season in a game that Tampa wants to win, and he's only 5,900 against the Falcons, who never throw us a wrench at all. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm over figuring out this Falcons defense. My God, they... They like looked like the '85 Bears against Kansas City. It was crazy. Um, I don't know. I think I like if we if, is, is Fournette actually going to play? Questionable. Knows, but do you? I mean, I just wonder. You know, Jones missed the last two weeks coming off the COVID list. I just wonder how much they actually ride him going to the playoffs. But I mean, he's certainly talented for the price. That uh, kind of the kind of the Aaron Jones model where the the, the talent sticks out so much for the price. But I think. Uh, I think Wilson will be uh, much more owned than Jones will be. Okay, that's fair. I like them both. Yeah, all right. What about uh, right below that with Melvin Gordon at 5,700? Uh, Philip Lindsay is out. Uh, Gordon played 51 snaps last week with Lindsay out. He was 16 for 79. He hadn't played 50 snaps since week four. So, like, it was a clear bump last week with, with Lindsay not playing. And Lindsay's done for the year. He's on the IR now. Uh, Vegas is allowing 4.8 run, yard per carry to running backs. They are really bad. Uh, Gordon's been over 6.6 6 yards, 6 yards per carry the last four games. So he's actually like hasn't had a ton of work, but has done really well with it. Uh, Miles Gaskin lit up Vegas last weekend. He had two touchdowns receiving. Uh, Jonathan Taylor lit them up the week before that. He was 20 for 150 and two touchdowns. Um, I'm not a Melvin Gordon guy, but I kind of like the spot. I think that's a nice way to put it. Yeah. Um, I don't think many people are going to play him. Um, because we were saying we have some some guys much further down that you can get away with. We do. Um, so I think he's fine. Um, but given the situation, is he better than Wayne Gallman? I think he's better. I'd rather play him than Wayne Gallman. Even in a must-win game for the Giants who have a horrific quarterback? <laughs> Boy, is he bad. 
I watched Daniel Jones last week because I had Darius Slayton, and it was really frustrating. There were a couple times where, like, he missed, like, pitch and catch kind of open balls to, to Slayton. There were, like, 12 and 15-yard plays. Like, what? he's so bad. Um, I just worry about Goldman's uses lately. Like, he's been under 10 carries the last two weeks. He had, what, eight touches last week, nine before that. They just don't – they don't seem to be feeding him at all like they were uh, earlier, maybe, like, th- three or four or five weeks ago. Well, when you sign Alfred Morris, then obviously you need to – what a what a weird strange team. Yeah, again they're they're playing Dallas, which is a great uh, great matchup. Uh, we've seen uh, teams smoke Dallas for pretty much all year long on, on defense. And uh, Miles Sanders was uh, just kind of okay last week against Dallas, but they've they've given up a lot of big games. Yeah, I could see uh, I could see Gallman, but I, I I prefer Melvin Gordon this week. Okay, that's fair. Gallman's what fifty three hundred, so you get you save a little bit there. But um, let's jump down. Uh, before we jump down though, why is Alexander Madison sixty one hundred? Because they couldn't make the same mistake as earlier in the season when he was fourth. It just out. seems weird to me that he's like more than than Wilson and Gallman and Melvin Gordon when he's questionable, hasn't really done. I get it, you know, Cook. He had that one big game where Cook got hurt, but I was kind of surprised by that price. Um, I'm not playing him at 6100. Put it that way. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, he, it's probably the right price though. Like as a backup, like he's he's priced as a starter. I'll put I'd it rather have him priced there than like four thousand. Don't get me wrong, but like I think like fifty three hundred with him a good spot where I would have to like consider him strongly. Where at sixty one hundred, I'm probably just crossing him off. Uh, I feel like sixty one hundred would be the price for any player who was going to be a starting running back against Detroit. Uh, that's fair. The matchup is is so or, and, and big even just for the Vikings. So the way that the Vikings use run, their running backs, I think. Yeah, and good good game script and all that, but uh, he partially practiced on Wednesday. He's questionable play. I think he's probably going to play, but um, I'm not going there this week. Yeah, no, I, it's, uh, I'm thankful for the price so that I can yeah, just that's, keep that's moving. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So let's jump down to Waylo. Um, we've got, uh, I think, three names that it might turn into four, depending on Madison's status. If if Madison doesn't play, I think uh, I think Mike Boone at four thousand will be uh, will be definitely in, in the mix. But we've got Malcolm Brown down here at forty three hundred against Arizona. Um, Cam Akers and Darrell Henderson are out, so he is uh, you know looks like he's going to be the guy. They have some other guys there, but you know nobody that's really excited. You granted Jared Goff's not playing. They have someone named John Wolford playing quarterback from the. Was it the AAF? Was that what it was that, that played in the AF uh, earlier this spring? It was not the XFL. It was the other one. I right, it was the, the other American, one. American Association of Football. I think it was the AAF. Um, so we've got Malcolm Brown down here at 4,300 on DraftKings. We have uh, Ty Johnson on your Jets at 4,300 going against the Patriots. Uh, uh, LaMichael, I almost call him Samaj. LaMichael P. Ryan's on the COVID list. Uh, Frank Gore is out. He is, uh, he's not playing. So, uh, you know, it's Ty Johnson uh, or Bust kind of. I think there's, there's really nobody else there. And then we have um, Rodney Smith with the Panthers. Uh, both uh, Christian McCaffrey and Mike Davis are not playing. He's 4,000 grades going against the Saints, who have had a really good rush defense all year long. But, you know, the, the Panthers have shown that they're willing to throw the ball a lot to the running back. So Rodney Smith, a, uh, a rookie out of Minnesota, is also in the mix here at 4,000. What the heck are you doing with this uh, with, this, with this group of guys out here? Because one of them is going to go off and be a huge play. But uh, which one's going to be? Um, first, uh, Alliance of American Football. Alliance, which I say association. I got the AF though, right? Yeah. I'm gonna give, um, I give myself uh, three quarters credit there. I think the crazy thing about Johnson is that he is without a doubt the best running back the Jets have had all season, including Le'Veon Bell. And yet it took until week 16, week 17 for Frank Gore to be out uh, and P. Ryan. I think Johnson is the best of that group. Um, the Jets... As much as even if they wanted to air it out, they don't. Um, and he is, like I said, he's the best one of that group. Uh, should be a close game. Those games are always kind of tight. Um, well, not always. Let me rephrase that. Um, I, I would guess really always. No, very much not always. But I think he's uh, the the better one of that group, just because it is a little bit of a more known thing. I think the Jets would love to win this game. Too. Sure. I think they're you know they'd love to beat the Patriots. They'd love to win three games to end the season. Ty Johnson had one game this year with double digit touches. He was, was huge. 22. He was 22 for 104 and a touchdown against the Raiders. I I don't know if I blacked out that game or what happened. I looked at that. I'm like, I wonder if he's had any games all year. And I was like, oh my God, he had 104 yards rushing against the Raiders. Um, New England gave up 93 yards to, to Zach Moss and Devin Singletary last week. They gave up 122 to Salvin Ahmed week 15. They gave up 171 to Cam Akers week before that. New England is not good in any way. And they're really not good against the run right now. And, uh, I think the I think the Patriots want to get out of this season. I think they want to be done. 
He's super cheap. It's uh, it's hard not to like Ty Johnson at 4,300. I think him and Malcolm Brown are both going to be really, uh, really in the mix and pretty popular. Um, so Frank Gore, I think, got hurt early in that game against uh, the Raiders where Ty Johnson had his huge game. Right. So um, Ty Johnson has his big game and everyone's like, oh, he's going to get some more carries, like blah, blah, blah. Next game, Gore's back, takes everything. Um, but anyway. Uh, it's, it's really crazy how many carries Frank Gore had this year. <sighs> It's why it's like we joke about it. We always joke about Frank Gore never dies, but like the the amount of carries he has is just nuts. I don't know what I don't know what your boys are doing there. The I know you have like a soft spot for him for his years in San Francisco, but like I love I love Frank Gore. Um, he his like Hall of Fame Kate, like he's a easy Hall of Famer by the way that like the guys get to the Hall of Fame, but like he makes Jerome Bettis blush based off of his compilation stats. Like it's crazy. Um, but anyway, I think, yeah, I think a lot of people top, will play he didn't top, All those carries, he didn't top 75 rushing yards all year. If you told me he hasn't topped 75 rushing yards since 2007, I believe you. He was so good in San Francisco, though. So I, I do have a soft spot. And he came off, like, whatever it was, 35 ACL surgeries yeah. in college and coming up. Like, he came through so much. Um, it's uh, I get it, but I, I do have a soft spot for him. And he was, he was really good in San Francisco. And I think that some of that gets lost by the fact that he's just hung on for so long. Was it a national championship game where he had that one in – the the first ACL. I think you're thinking of Willie Willis McGahee. I am thinking of McGahee. You're right. Thank you. The gross, like the yeah. It no, was no, awful. No, it was mm. Disgusting. Um, Gore had Gore had two when he was at Miami, but the the championship game one was McGahee. Oh okay. Uh, but yeah, I think most people are going to play Brown because um, not playing a Jet is better than playing a Jet. Is not playing a Jet better than playing a Jet when John Wolford's your quarterback and that we've he, I mean he may be very good, but we've never seen him play an NFL game because he never has. Um, I mean, if you asked me, like, if you told me his name and was like, what's his profession? Like football player is not, wasn't going to be on the list. Yeah, um, he's, he's, he's got a little bit of like, get out of the pocket and run though. So like, maybe that helps Malcolm Brown a little bit, but, um, yeah, Malcolm Brown has played 40, 40 plus snaps three times. He was really good week one. He had two, t- two touchdowns. He had 18 for 79 week eight. He was 10 for 40 and then two catches did nothing. And then week 16 last week, he was seven for 27 and a catch. So like, Everybody's going to point to that week one game like, oh, look what Malcolm Brown can do when he gets playing time. But like the two he got, he played a lot after that were not good. So I don't know. The, the Cardinals allow 4.6 yards per carry. The first matchup against Arizona, Akers, Henderson, Brown combined for 27 for 118 and two touchdowns. So they were really good. They have run the ball really well against Arizona over the last uh, two seasons. Sean McVay has a pretty good, uh, pretty good idea of how to run the ball against Arizona. So there is that. But I think Johnson's the better player. Okay. How many people do you think, at least in cash games, play Brown, Johnson, Henry? It's got to be popular, right? Like that's as you're building it, like, and you want to get some receivers in, like it's just it's just an easy way to go to start out. Do you think Boone is better than all of them? Yeah, I think if Madison, do I think he's better than all of them, or I think he's like, I think he's in a just better situation. Yeah. Um, if Madison is ruled out, I think Boone jumps both of them in yeah. in, in ownership percentage just because. He's on Minnesota. They know how to run the ball, and they're playing against Detroit, who just cannot stop a thing right now. Yep. All right. Any any love for Carolina Rodney Smith? I mean, he's clearly going to be the fourth on this list just because we don't know anything about him. Um, he's 11 for 46 the last two weeks. Also had six targets, though. So he had he played he played 45 snaps total the last two weeks, had six targets. So, like, Carolina dumps off to the running back, and it just kind of keeps going. Um I think if you wanted to get away from the other two guys in a GPP and, and fire a low a, a low percentage dart at the price, I think Smith becomes interesting because I think they might throw to him seven times. Do you think he makes more sense as a GPP dart than Boone, even if Madison plays? Oh, that's an interesting one. Yeah, if Madison plays, I'd play Smith over Boone. Okay. Just for workload right. and playing against the Saints, like they're going to be losing that game. Maybe they just dump off a lot. I mean, they're all all these guys are darts. Although I think you know Johnson and Brown probably have that. I think the workload is a little more built in, and they probably are a little more secure. To like touch the ball a bunch, but yeah. I mean, the problem with Rodney Smith really is that Curtis Samuel had seven carries last week, and they're just going to like they're going to use him as a, a little bit of a running back kind of uh, you know running back slash receiver at the same time and kind of move the ball around and they have two good receivers. So they don't really have a reason to have to go to Smith, but um, you know, I think the appeal of the Carolina offense dumping off to receiver does, does give them a little, a little bit of liveliness there. That's fair. 
It's a fun. It's a fun running back week. There are there are plays all over all over the price range. Sure are. Let's jump into the passing game. Um, but first, a note from our sponsor, BetMGM. Sports bettors know that magic happens when you turn a hunch into action and apply the right amount of expertise. That's why BetMGM has teamed up with RotoWire to offer new BetMGM customers a free six month RotoWire subscription when they place their first bet. Register on the BetMGM app or website and use promo code ROTO, that's R O T O, to claim your free subscription. Once you make your first sports wager, you receive a season's length of RotoWire's unmatched sports insights. Find out why BetMGM is the king of sports by signing up and placing your first bet today. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. 21 years or old of age or older to wager. Colorado, Indiana, New Jersey, Nevada, Tennessee, and West Virginia only. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, Nevada. 1-800-GAMBLER in New Jersey and West Virginia. In Tennessee, call or text the red line 800-889-9789. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help in Indiana, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Promotional offer not available in Nevada. So, Andrew, quarterback is uh, – I think quarterback is a little tougher for me this week than running back. Like, I, I went through running backs and wide receivers. There was, like, a lot of guys in each price range I really liked. Quarterback's a little tougher. Like, you kind of have to hope that uh, these guys get in a little bit of a close game. We've got, uh, you know, got uh, Tannehill and Watson going against each other in the highest uh, scoring game. Then we have Rodgers against Chicago at 7,400. Like, and then you got Lamar at 8,000. And, you know, Baltimore has to win. But, you know, how much do they risk Lamar if they're up big on Cincinnati at halftime? Uh, what are you doing in quarterback kind of in his, in his top range of guys? We also have Josh Allen up there at 7,600. He's been unbelievable, but, you know, just Buffalo ease off on him if they're winning. But uh, what are you doing at quarterback at kind of this top range? Uh, so my first build attempt was a Henry Fade, which okay. immediately made me go to Tannehill. Of course. So I think that's what you do. Um, if you don't want to pay all the way up for Henry, then Tannehill is, kind of makes the decision for you because – uh, if you're not going to take the best offensive weapon on the team with the highest implied total, then you may as well right. take the second. Um, and we, we talk about Houston not stopping the run all year, but like they gave up 371 yards passing to Brandon Allen last week. Right. Like they Absolutely can't stop the pass. They can't stop the pass either. Like it's just, it's bad. Um, yeah. I think he could be pop. I think he'll be popular for everybody who doesn't play Henry. Um, yeah. And playing both of them, I don't think is crazy either, but um, that's just a lot uh, of is. salary there. Um, it is. The Watson, I mean, how do you ever not consider Watson? I have, I have, I love Deshaun Watson. I've like grown in my love of Deshaun Watson all year. Like I just think they've been terrible all year. And mm-hmm. JJ watches JJ Watt's speech, by the way, at the end of the game last week, I thought was awesome. I love JJ Watt. Like he's just like, we suck and we shouldn't suck because the fans care about this. Like give me more of that anytime. Like mm-hmm. I love a guy who actually cares about, you know, the fact that you know fans care about this yeah. stuff, and it, it's uh, he's like we make a lot of money because fans care about this stuff, and I, I thought that was a really good speech. But I love Watson. I mean, he lost Will Fuller. And we're like, oh, this sucks. Like it's his best receiver, over nine YPA three of the last four games without Fuller. He was three twenty four and three last week. We talked earlier. The game was like, oh, I don't know, if Watson's getting there this week, and he got there. And got he has there. Twenty four plus rush yards in every game. Week five, thirty plus in five of seven. So he's building that uh, you know those three or four point rushing floors every week. Um, I just think this is a crazy game. Like it, it's the highest scoring game. They're seven and a half point dogs. Um, you know, as long as they're interested in this game and they want to, they want to play. He's gonna be throwing the last three quarters for sure. They, I mean, David Johnson's there, but like they don't have, they don't can't really run the ball. He did, they did well last week, but um, I love Watson again. He probably shouldn't play, right? Probably shouldn't play. <laughs> that's that's my one issue. Is like he tweaked, like he, t- he tweaked an ankle last week or something. He something, tweaked. Yeah. My only concern with Watson, it's funny you mentioned that, is like if he has anything happen to him, he's going to take him out. Like he probably shouldn't play. I think he will, though. Uh, I think he'll definitely start. Um, yeah. I, I have a little hesitation on on Watson for that reason. Um, I think, and, I, and I think that's fair and something that I definitely need to think about before I decide because you get one quarterback and there's a lot of good options. And I, I think that's a real I think it's a real concern. I think it's a good point. Like, I think it's. He should be, and obviously we don't get points for should. We get points what d- does happen. But right. like Lamar should play more than Watson. Like should, and should. Like if I were coaching the game, like what should happen? I yeah. agree. I think that, uh, you know, Lamar, the, the, I mean, the only concern is they get up, you know, 35 nothing at halftime and they sit him. But I think he's going to play. Yeah, I think he plays three quarters, right? But like how often do the Ravens score 35 and Lamar has like a terrible game? It, it almost can't happen. I mean, right. unless, they, <laughs> unless they have four rushing touchdowns, they do it, you know, what the Saints did to Drew Brees last week, which is possible. But um, yeah, I just, I guess the only concern of Lamar would be 
if you're up at all, do you just not call all those running plays for? Right. Him? That's fair. Um, but yeah, just like they have no chance to advance the playoffs without him, and they have a right. a pretty good chance to win a couple games with him. Yeah. I think they're just everyone like you just keep going down and like everyone has so many question marks. Like we talked about uh, Allen, obviously like B- Buffalo could uh, step off the gas, especially with Pittsburgh already giving up on, on Roethlisberger. Murray's matchup is about as terrible as it gets. Um, God, and he's a little bit banged up. God, no, on Kyler Murray. This right. Um, yeah. Rogers is spiteful enough that I think that's the thing. Like, do you think <laughs> like, I don't think it's crazy if he has like three touchdown passes at halftime and they go for 50. Right. <laughs> he has 44. I don't think it's crazy that they go for 50. Like, I don't think he's not going to get six touchdown passes. Don't get me wrong. But like, he wants the MVP. They want stats. Like, they pushed that all year. Do you think they pushed that in week 17? And it's a game the Bears have to win. So the Bears are going right. to be playing. Like, I don't know. I, I, I Is he that spiteful? Yeah. Yeah. He might be. He's You're like spiteful. hesitating. I think he absolutely yeah, I, is. I, so Green Bay, let's see. I'm looking at Green Bay's playoff situation. They have to, so they they're the one seed right now, but they have to win to lock that in. So this is a, they have to win this game. Like the one seed in the NFL is huge this year because it's the only team that gets a buy, and that's a massive edge to win two games, make the Super Bowl instead of three is huge. Like mm-hmm. look at the 49ers last year. 49ers last year don't win, don't make the Super Bowl if they don't get the you don't get the buy in the first. Right. Week. I, I don't think they would have won three road games. Like it's a huge, it's a huge thing. Um, yeah, like I think that Rodgers wants to win the MVP pretty badly. Yeah, I, I think he's great. I mean, like, does Wilson play a whole game? Uh, that's a tough one, too. So Seattle is a three seed, could move up to one, but they need Green Bay and New Orleans to both lose, right. which is kind of hard to see happening. But I mean, Wilson, the Wilson season is strange. Like, we it's talked really last strange. week how, how different his first and second half are. But that's another game last week. He had uh, he had one passing touchdown. It's seven of eight weeks now with two passing touchdowns or fewer even crazier though, 250 yards or fewer passing in six of the last seven weeks. Like he has not been a good fantasy quarterback the last, the second half of the season, which is crazy to say the Niners struggle with running quarterbacks and deep balls. They're 31st in the league in passing points on balls thrown 15 plus yards. So like the two things that Russell Wilson does, the Niners are bad at. Um, he was 261 of four against them in week eight. Um, I actually think Wilson's a, a pretty interesting GPP guy this week is someone that no one's going to play. And for good reason, he hasn't been good, but um, he smokes the Niners. Okay. I, I Yeah, I mean, like, they, I'm not playing him have, in cash, but I get it. No, I wouldn't play him in cash. I think if you wanted to be – I don't think anybody's going to have him this week, though. Like, it's a game that, you know, maybe he doesn't play the whole game if they're – you know, if Green Bay and New Orleans are winning or whatever it may be. But um, I don't know. I think he's uh, – I think you could see the path to get there, but it's just been – their offense is not called that way right now, and that's that's a pretty big factor. Yeah. I mean, I think people are much more likely to play the guy who had 345 and three – 390 and two, 348 and four, and three of his last four games. Uh, of course, we play Tom Brady when he has 196 and two. Um, so that 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 was the weirdest, strangest, crappy. I have no idea how that game worked out. Still, that was just. Ugh. Um, they ran like nine plays in the first half. Mm-hmm. It was the most absurd game. It was so strange. It was just yeah. Do you think more was, people play Brady or Tannehill? I think more people play Tannehill. Why? Uh, a little bit cheaper in the highest total game. Okay. I don't think I, Brady's right there, seventy two hundred. Like I just, I think Tanner will be a little bit higher owned. But Brady, multiple touchdowns, six straight games, and he had that first half last week, I mean, three forty eight and four in the first half. Uh, I have no idea what the Atlanta defense is anymore. Either, they're either the best defense ever or the world. Like, it's never anything in between. And they have to win because I think they want to play the NFC East. I just wonder. You know, if the, if they're up, they've clearly shown they'll take him out at some point. So I worry about that a little bit. Okay. But not worry but enough that you play Ronald Jones. Not worry enough to play Ronald Jones because I think they might do it with Ronald Jones too. <laughs> All right. But it, it's fair. Tampa Bay's going to score. I mean, they, they've they been scoring. And, I mean, they had six touchdown passes last week. I mean, uh, whoever – I forget who came in for, for Brady, but he had two, uh, two more also. It was someone it – was, was Blaine Gabbert? Gabbert, I think, yeah. Who is just the freaking worst. So – um, I was just, yeah. I was chuckling at your, you think they do it to Robert Jones too, because that's how I read his name every time. Not Ronald Jones, the second or Ronald that's Jones. True. I, I, as my son would read it. Um, like that. but yeah, all right. That's fair. Um, so if I'm going to save a little money though, off the top guys, why do I not just go down at 6,300 to Kirk cousins against Detroit? I agree. Like, why not? 
No Dalvin Cook, so like that whole like the feed the running back all game kind of goes away. I mean, if they get up, they'll give it to Boone and Madison. But multiple touchdowns in seven of eight games, uh, three touchdowns in five of the last eight, 270 plus passing yards in six of the last seven. He has two of the 10 best receivers on the slate playing in the same game. Um, Detroit's getting up 10.2 YPA last five games. They get up, they get up six touchdown passes last week to Brady and Gabbert, three plus touchdowns in four or five. Like Detroit has absolutely packed in this season. It's hard for me to get away with Kirk Cousins, but like every time I do that, I get burned. So it's, uh, <laughs> that's the only hesitation. But not has no reason to come out of the game early. And Minnesota's you know trying to put up stats, trying to win. They've shown they're doing that last few weeks. Um, I think if you're going to go cheap, he's the he's the guy down here this week. I think my uh, favorite thing about Cousins also is that it doesn't make me consider Philip Rivers. Like Philip Rivers is six thousand in in a great matchup that theoretically he should be able to do whatever he wants, but now I don't have to think about it. Jackson was allowed multiple touchdown passes in nine straight games. Like they just cannot stop the pass. Um, Rivers is under 300 yards in six straight games. So like, I just, I think that they want to run the ball in this game. I think they want to feed yeah. Taylor. I think they want to feed Hines. I think they want to run the ball. And um, he's only been over two passing touchdowns once in the last eight games. So I, just, I just think the ceiling is low enough on Rivers that I, I would play cousins over him for sure. Great. <laughs> Do you consider e- any of the cheap, super cheap guys down here? The, the Chad Hennies, the John Wolfords. You get to get him for like I think Wolfords forty nine hundred. Uh, Chenny Henny might be fifty one hundred. Uh, huge savings, but I just, a quarterback so key in the lineup. Like you can't, you can't get twelve point, points on your quarterback and win. So I just, I don't think I could do it. But uh, I guess Wolfords a little bit issue because he runs the ball a little bit apparently too. But like. I have. I'm, I, it's hard for me to play a quarterback I've never seen play. Yeah, no, that's how I feel. I think the cheapest guy I look at is Andy Dalton, and I doubt I play Andy Dalton. He was but here like, last. kind of makes sense. Yeah, I mean, he's got three really good receivers, and they 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 all produced last week, and um, they put up a lot of stats last week. I still think I'd go Cousins. Yeah, I like I like the Cousins idea at least. Yeah, and I got to figure out Watson because I really like Watson, but it's I think I think you make a good point on whether he plays four quarters in this game, whether he should play four quarters in this game. We we know he should not. It's just, yes. <laughs> the question is, does this Houston feel the same way? They want to win that game. And right. I don't, I don't know. So uh, let's jump into, into, into wide receivers. Uh, we've got uh, at the top. We have the same guys we do every week. We've got Devontae Adams at 9,200. They were in the snow last week. Like it, it, we're like, Oh, he's not going to go that crazy in the snow. They were up in that game. And they kept throwing him the ball. Like, I saw people, there are people in season-long championships that are like, can you stop throwing the ball to Devontae Adams for no reason? Like, you're up 30 points. It's snowing. Corey Davis had no catches in the game because everything was so bad. Tannehill had like 140 yards. A.J. Brown had four catches. Devontae Adams, 11 for 142 and three touchdowns. Like, truly absurd game. <laughs> it's really annoying. Do you think they're trying to do uh, Rodgers MVP and Adams Offensive Player of the Year? May, I think they made a big deal this week about Adam getting 99 points on or 99 rating on Madden this week. So maybe they're trying to do that. I have no idea what's going on, but it it's insane how much they're feeding him considering they had a huge lead and it was snowing. Like I, I, just, I mean, it works. He's really, he's awesome. He has 70 touchdowns. He only played 13 games. Like he has eight plus targets in every full game. Like there's, you can go down the stats, but he's just, the dude's unbelievably good every week. I am not playing him this week. At 9,200, I'm not either because there's a lot of guys. A lot of guys I love a lot of guys in the 7,000, so I don't think I'm going to get there with Adams. But if you want to play Adams, like I'm not going to argue against you at all anyway. Uh, that's fair. I just don't see myself playing Adams over Henry if I'm playing somebody this expensive. So um, It's kind of a consideration. You can't, you're not going to play both of them, so you kind of have to play right. either or if you're going to do that. No. If you play both of them, you're probably going to be fairly unique. <laughs> Yeah, and you're, I mean, you could do it this week with the $4,000 running backs and the $3,000 receivers, but yeah, it's, uh, you gotta, you gotta, a lot of cheap guys gotta get there. Yeah, yeah. Calvin Ridley is $700 less, he's 8500 and this dude's been unbelievable also. Uh, over 100 yards, four straight games. We talked about the games where he has no Julio. He has five yard, five games over 100 yards in, in those six games. The other one he scored a touchdown in. He was 10 for 163 in a touchdown two weeks ago against Tampa, who they play this week. Like, he was really good. Uh, same kind of thing with Adams. Like I think Adam Ridley will really good. It's just really expensive. You know who shouldn't play this week? Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I get it. Like I get playing him, but I, he's on a roll right now. Yeah, he is. Like he's been 
I mean, he's putting up massive games every week for like a month and a half now. It's uh, it's a he's he's really good. It's uh, an expensive game stack, though. It is. I guess you go. I guess you go cheaper. You go Ryan instead of Brady, and then come back with one of the receivers. But good luck picking a Tampa receiver. Well, I saw uh, earlier today, and it's only fifty yards. But Mike Evans is fifty yards short of a thousand. Yeah, and he would be the first player ever to hit a thousand yard receiving yards in his first seven seasons. They're getting him fifty yards, right? But did they get him fifty, and he's done? Yeah, there's that too, right? Like, and it's just like the situation's weird. I had six touchdowns. They still swam around last week. I mean, I think Godwin, Brown, Evans, and Gronk had Gronk had two catches, scored on both of them. But right, um, right below him, we have Stephon Diggs, who leads the NFL in catches and in yards. Um, had a massive game last week. Had almost, I think it's like right around there with the same points as Adams did. Double digit PPR points in every game. Forty catches the last four weeks, not targets. Forty catches the last four weeks, like. Over 130 yards each of the last three weeks. It's a it's a bonkers stat line for Diggs. I mean, he's broken out as a, you know, all, people always liked him in Minnesota, but like he's become an elite receiver. I wonder how much they'll use him. You know, they they're one of those teams that like has the playoffs locked up. They just they're battling on seeding. Um, Beasley got hurt like in the last series of the game last week, so maybe that's in their head a little bit with Diggs. Um, I worry Diggs is one of the guys that I worry about him playing four quarters. I don't think he will. I think if we knew he was playing the whole game, we would play him. Easily, yes. um, but because of the hesitancy, I don't see myself ending up on him. Yeah, and eighty one hundred. I I'd rather play something I'm not hesitant on. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it it obviously just well. I mean, not that uh, Hopkins and Allen Robinson aren't good, but like the Vikings guys. Like it's funny how you brought up Cousins because I actually didn't really think of Cousins that much, but I was like definitely considering Jefferson and Thielen. Love Jefferson this week. 7,600, I think, is uh, – I was surprised. I thought it would be a little bit higher. I mean, he uh, he trails Anquan Bolden for 110 yards for the most receiving yards ever in a season by a rookie. I promise you that someone knows that stat in Minnesota. I think he's going to get there. 70-plus um, yards in six of seven games. Detroit is just an absolute disaster. Mm-hmm. I mean, Evans had 181 and two touchdowns on him last week, and they gave up, what, four touchdowns of wide receivers plus the two to Gronk. Corey Davis had 110 yards, and A.J. Brown scored the week before that. Uh, they've allowed 100 receiver in five of six. Uh, I love Justin Jefferson this week. He's going to be in a lot of my lineups. So do you like him? You obviously like him more than Hopkins and Robinson. For sure. Okay. For sure over Hopkins because Kyler's not healthy. And when we've seen an unhealthy Kyler, yeah. it's a disaster. I want. Uh, I want, I don't think I want any part of that Arizona. I just have no idea. That game is going to be – the Rams are going to have to play defense because they're not going to score that many points with, with Wolford, you would think. I just – I don't think I want any part of the Arizona offense this week. Yeah, no, that's fair. Robinson. But I, I, I never argue with Allen Robinson. I think Allen Robinson's awesome. Double digit PPR in 13 straight games. Like, I think if you want to play Robinson over Jefferson, I get it. I just, I like Jefferson's upside more. I don't think I played Robinson once this season. Um, and it's you never. Love be- him. You love him too. You always praise him. It's never because I don't think he's a good play, or it's never because I think he's a bad play. I'll put it that way. Triple um, negatives, fine, we're good. He's always just like a little more expensive than I can get. And I just like, but every week I see like lineups with them and I'm like, oh, that's how you got him in. And I'm like, that, that makes sense. Um, but Jefferson and Thielen, I think are ahead of him. And I'm guessing you love Metcalf this week. Love Metcalf this week. <laughs> uh, my only concern is, you know, hesitancy about them playing, but the four ers just can't stop DK Metcalf. Like they're, they don't have a player on their team that can stick with man. And we talked about it in week, whatever that was week eight. Right. We talked about the exact same thing. We played him. He was 12 for 161 and two touchdowns on 15 targets. They just, the way this game is set up, if Seattle wants to play the game normal, um, feed Metcalf because the Niners can't, they, can, they don't have anybody that can stick with him size wise or speed wise. Their corners just don't work out well for, for DK Metcalf. It's just a, it's just a really bad, he's a bad matchup for everybody. He's an especially bad matchup for the Niners. Yeah, no, I totally, totally but agree with you on that. He hadn't done a, he hadn't done much for like two months. Like he's topped eighty yards once in the last seven weeks, which is which is wild. I think he uh, I think he hits a couple of big plays this week, and I, I think he's a really good play at seventy three hundred. Who's the next most expensive guy that on your list? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, I thought about Brandon Cooks six nine hundred, but I think he's a little bit too pricey. Me too. It's actually fifty seven hundred DJ Moore. I think. Wow. Um, Did I skip somebody that you really like? I just. I don't really trust Robert Woods with John Wolford. Um, Corey, Corey Davis. Davis. Yeah, maybe 6,200. I, that was the only one. I was expecting you to say Corey Davis. I'll, I'll put yeah. it that way. 
Um, I have I have him on here. I, I don't have him bolded, but uh, he's just really up and down. Like, I think I he's fine. Like, yeah, his last six weeks: 113 yards, 70, 182, 34, 110, zero. Like, zero. Uh, yeah, it's, the targets have been up and down too. They're just like mm-hmm. weeks that. I think that if they wanted to use him, and I think he could be great. I mean, he's really good. I think this matchup is great. I just think they're going to feed the hell out of Henry. Yeah, totally agree. Um, and I don't, I don't think I want. If I had to go Tampa receiver, I'd agree with you. I'd go Mike Evans, but he's seventy five hundred, and I'm not playing him over Metcalf, Thielen, Jefferson, or the other guy in this range. We didn't really talk about that. I really like. I actually do like AJ Brown. I'd play AJ Brown over Corey Davis. I think this week. Um, but again, it's it, how much they feed Henry is the is the concern. I, if you're going to go Tannehill though, I go with AJ Brown. I think AJ Brown is a, a big game this week. Okay. That's fair. Um, Houston just can't stop anybody. But like I said, I just, you just wonder how much they run. They run the ball. Is the DJ more liking that it's DJ Moore and he's always good or like that matchup's not ideal. It's not. Um, I think they had to throw the ball a little bit. He was quiet last week, but five for 37, you know, kind of disappointing, but he had 10 targets and, Eight plus targets, last four games. I think he's a guy that's that talented with that many targets under six thousand. I just have to be interested. Okay, scored, that's fair. Scored, scored twice on New Orleans in Week Seven. Yeah. Oh, uh, all right. And I think he hit that like big play down the sideline that I remember. I think I texted you about because it was at the point where DJ Moore kind of had a couple of bad games and I still liked him and I, I was excited he scored twice that week. But um, ninety plus yards in, in in six of his last ten games. Like, I just think he's a really good receiver at 5700 i think the talent is just is just jumps off the page to me at that price um speaking of guys who score two touchdowns how much do you love michael gallup at 5000 love michael gallup at 5000 i'm so frustrated that he was questionable and hurt last week we played in the two weeks before they scored the week before that so we did okay for us but i mean he just he leads dallas in targets since andy dalton returned and like he's a really good player he's we can't doubt that he's a talented guy he was really good last year in his rookie year dalton likes him um, you know, 120 yards, two touchdowns last week. They're playing the Giants, who I'm, you know, I'm not scared of. You know, I like to check weather there to make sure it's not gonna be windy. But yeah, I mean, Gallup at 5,000, I think, is is hugely playable this week. Um, I think it was Jerry Donabedian who noted it in, <coughs> excuse me, in his start sit this week, um, that the matchup against the Giants is not something that you should worry about. But Amari Cooper specifically against James yep. Bradbury was like he completely shut down in the first matchup. Yeah. Um, it's weird. Amari seems like if they, it's one of those guys that if you have that stud DB that actually like he has trouble against like top end DBs. And obviously they think he's good enough to warrant shadowing. Yes. And I guess he lines up outside. He's just that guy. He's just that like, guy. Yeah. It's hard to do against Dallas. Cause like, all right, we'll just throw lamb and gallop and it's right. really not that big a deal. But um, I think lamb's playable this week too. 5,200 um, Bradbury should be on Amari. He was eight for one twenty four and 11 targets against the giants. The first matchup. So clearly they, they, you know, Dallas saw that and, and went a different direction too. And you know, it, it, if you have one ride receiver, it's hard to go away from him with, with a, a stud corner. But if you have two other guys, like all right, when you want to shut that, that one down, we just go other guys. But yeah, I think Gallup and lamb are both, uh, both really good plays this week in a game that, you know, Dallas has to win. And, um, you know, the, the Washington plays later, so they're going to have to win. And they, there's no, like, scoreboard watching in, in game or anything. Got to win the game to stay alive. Yeah. Yeah. Gallup just looked cheap to me. So I, I figured I, if I, I like him at 5,000, Scott's going to love him. <laughs> yeah. You you knew he was bolded on, on my sheet here. I, sure. I think he's, uh, you know, he just, I mean, he's just getting a lot of action and he's very involved the last three or four weeks. And it's changed since the start of the season and coming off a great game. He's really good. He's their deep guy. It's just, it's, it's a great mix of everything for Gallup. Yeah. Agreed. Do you consider Curtis Samuel in this range at 5,300? You know, seven carries last week, 106 yards receiving two and 52 yards rushing. Um, probably should get more carries. Mike Davis and McCaffrey aren't playing. We talked about Rodney Smith earlier. Um, his targets have been pretty good the last five weeks. He has like three of those games or nine or above. Uh, I wish he was like 4,500, 5,300. I think there's other guys in this range I just like more. Yeah, I I just don't see a reason to like buy in against the Saints. Um, yeah, like that defense fair. is pretty good. Um, and I'd go up 400 of DJ Moore pretty easily, I think. Yeah, probably. Which is the problem for me. Like, I just, if I'm going to play one of the receivers and they're that close in price, it's going to be more for me. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm looking at this range. Uh, any love for Jameson Crowder? Obviously, he was, uh, was really good last week, seven for 92 and a touchdown. He's priced at 5,000, though. Like, it'd be hard for me to play him over Gallup or Lamb. Yeah, I, I just don't want to buy into like a wide receiver 
when I have a running back who's going to get 35 touches. <laughs> yeah, it's true. When you when you're carrying when Ty Johnson's carrying the championships, you yeah, can't like, was, role, so. right, exactly. Uh, you got Marvin Jones in there, but I, I think that uh, you know Minnesota's not very good against receivers. That game script could work, but the Detroit's such a mess right now. Uh, what about the Giants guys? Uh, we talked about how the Dallas has to win. Uh, Sterling Shepard was nine for seventy-seven touchdown last week on twelve targets. Frustrating for me because I actually like Darius Slayton, and Slayton still got a bunch of targets, but. Um, Shepard is one that scored Dallas has struggled against wide receivers all year. Are you kind of jumping into this passing game? I know Daniel Jones is frustrating to watch. <clears throat> excuse me. The, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Slayton is the one I want to talk about because if you were like, uh, we have a team in a must win situation and there's a wide receiver who has 23 targets in the last three games and he's 4,100, you'd be like, yes, give that guy to me. And then I said, well, he actually has nine catches in those three games. And he was he's two for 26 last week on eight targets. Like, eight, come on. He had eight, 31 on eight targets, 26 on eight targets, and 74 on nine targets. That one included a 35-yarder. He's kind of like a big play type of guy, too. Like, it's not like we're throwing the ball to Darren Sproles here. Like, it's just uh, Daniel Jones. There's a ball in the fourth quarter last drive last week that I was watching the game. And, like, it, I talked about it earlier. But, like, a 15-yard out that was literally I make the throw. Like it was that open. Like it, it, if they're playing prevent and he missed him by like seven yards. It yeah, was like, so bad. yeah. It was so bad. Like it, it's an NFL, it's a it's a throw an NFL quarterback has to make in his sleep. And Jones missed him. He like overthrew him by seven. It was insane. Yeah, I'm much more interested in the Cowboys receivers than the Giants in that game. So we talked about the Chiefs are sitting everybody. Does that make you want to play someone like McCall Hardman at forty two hundred? Like, are you getting into that in this offense at all? It's funny because it's like, um, Previous prices shouldn't affect how you feel this week. But, like, right. I just played McCole Hardman at 3100 with Patrick Mahomes, so I don't want to pay <laughs> yeah. 1100 more <laughs> without Mahomes. It's as simple as that. And I get why they priced him up. Like, Hill's not going to play. Kelsey's not going to play. There's going to be a lot of targets available. But, God, it's Chad Henney. I just uh, – No I thanks. Just, I don't really do it. It's simple no thank you. Yeah, I, I agree there. And I think it's mostly because there's other guys in this range cheaper that I like. A guy that's interesting at 4200 to me is, is Zach Paschal. Um, 12 targets the last two weeks. He's been five for 70, 79, a touchdown, two touchdowns, and then three for 64 and a touchdown. Uh, we talked about the matchup. We talked about Rivers. Like, we don't plan to play the Rivers, but Jacksonville can't stop anybody. Um, the Jacksonville wide receiver sl- stats against wide receivers are obviously massive. We talked about it earlier. We talked about that. But Pascal's a guy at 4,200, I think, is, is involved right now. He seems to be more involved than Michael Pittman does, a guy that we liked earlier in the season. Um, T.Y. Hilton's obviously the main guy bit there, but he's he's priced up a little bit higher. Um, I, I kind of like Pascal this week at 4,200. Um, I think he just falls in that fine category. Like, yeah. If, like, the realistic ceiling, I know he had 24 points the other or two weeks ago because of the two touchdowns, but, like, I, you just don't expect two touchdowns out of somebody like that. Uh, Jacksonville has allowed a 90 plus yard wide receiver in every single game since week five. Uh, since week five. I get and it. And Hilt- Hilton's 5,800. So he's kind of like in that range where it's kind of hard to get there. But like the Jacksonville's so bad against wide receivers that I just think that if you, if you could save the money and I think Pascal kind of, you're right though. I mean, it's a guy that is probably fine, but I think that the, the matchup is good enough and it pushes me a little bit better than fine. Yes. That that's, a fair assessment. I just, I'll do my best not to play him. <laughs> fair enough. Um, so we got some guys cheaper though. Um, I kind of like Gabriel Davis in Buffalo, but now John Brown's going to play. So I think I'm crossing him off and not knowing how much, how much they pump their guys this week. I, I think I'm probably off Davis, but we have Jalen Guyton at 3,400. I don't think Keenan Allen's going to play. We're talking about guys who shouldn't play. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Keenan Allen shouldn't play. Like no. he, two, two weeks ago, he tried and it was bad last week. He didn't play, but uh, Guyton led the, the Chargers wide receivers in snaps last week. He only he had five targets. He was three for 43, 11 targets last couple weeks. I just think it's a, he's 3,400. It's a good game script. The could, game script could be anything. Like we don't know what's going to happen in this game. We don't know if the Chiefs are going to score 27 against the Chargers because that's what the Chargers do or they're going to score three with Chad Henney. I just don't know. But um, Guyton's someone who's involved with a very good quarterback. We didn't really talk about Justin Herbert earlier, but um, Guyton at 3,400 seems pretty playable to me. Yeah, I think there's just like from a, cash game perspective. I think there's just too many unknowns about that game that I don't lot, really want to go into it. Um, do you have any thought on John Brown though? Like we say, we don't want to play Davis because of Brown, but like Brown's back. Do you think they play him a lot to get him back in the game shape for the playoffs? 
you would think like kind of develop that chemistry and kind of get things going with Allen a little bit. Cole Beasley, Cole Beasley, another guy that shouldn't play. I don't think he's going to play anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Brown's thirty six hundred. Like he, the talent, talent jumps off the page for thirty six hundred. There, I just, I don't know how much they push this offense this week. But yeah, I think that they're going to take a couple shots with Brown because I think they want to get him kind of back in the game. Yeah. Though, like you said, yeah, yeah, I think he could be fun. What about uh, what about Josh Reynolds down here? We don't know about uh, the the quarterback situation in the Rams, but uh, Cooper Cup's not going to play. He's on the COVID list, I think. Um, Ten targets last week for Reynolds. He's been targeted a lot when he has played a lot, and so it's one of those guys we talked about a couple weeks. I think a few weeks ago when we were, I know we talked to him in showdown. I think we talked a couple weeks ago when it's like he's just very involved when when he does get snaps. Um, he has four games with eight or more targets, which I wouldn't have guessed for Josh Reynolds this year, but yeah. thirty two hundred. I just the quarterback situation is who the heck knows, but someone's going to catch some passes there. And I think Reynolds is probably a pretty good bet to do so. Yeah, the the benefit about Reynolds is that we've seen him have good games. Of yeah. course, they were with Goff, but like we know he's a legitimate receiver at least. So and I think he's is, he is Goff better than is Goff better than John Wolford? That's fair. Good point. <laughs> Sorry, Jared Goff. I just had to take take a shot there. Jared Goff has looked terrible. Yeah. He's one of those guys, like, you rush anybody, he becomes just awful. Yeah. Like, it, like, it's, it's really – and I think McVay hides a lot of his stuff, but he's been exposed a little bit this year. I'm, I've been surprised how bad Jared Goss been this year. Hmm. That's, a, that's an interesting point. Uh, 49ers receivers. Uh, Rich uh, – Ayuk is not playing as the high alcohol spray. Uh, Debo Samuel's not playing. Kittle is back. Richie James had, like, 400 yards last time. The situation was <laughs> the same. Um, Kendrick Bourne seems to be the red zone guy. Um. I don't know. I just think if I'm going to play someone in the receiving game, I probably would just play Kittle. But um, I can see playing James based on the last game, but I just uh, – I don't know. I don't know if I want to trust. The, the Seahawks are playing a lot better against the pass than they were earlier in the year. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to trust anything here. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's not a situation I need to buy into. Anybody else that uh, you really like down here that, uh, that I haven't brought up? It's funny. You're like – on this type of slate, you're like, surely they're going to be like a bunch of like cheap guys that come out, but like they're everybody, there's no like reliable option down here. I mean, that's why they're down here, but yeah, uh, they're either, you know, game we don't know much about, or they're a quarterback. We don't know much about. It's hard. It was hard to like find a, a situation where like, Oh, this guy's definitely going to play. Like Rashard Higgins is 4,500, but like, I don't know how that game's going to go either. And he missed last week on the COVID list. Both him and Landry missed, but he had a lot of targets before that, but the Steelers may rest guys on D, but if he was like, 3,800, I think I'd play Higgins, but 4,500, I could probably get to other guys too. Yeah, agreed. Tight end, um, we have no Travis Kelsey. He's not going to play this week, or if he does, it'd be very minimal, but I don't think he's going to play at all. We have Darren Waller at 7,100, kind of the top of the list. Uh, Waller's been massive the last four weeks. Like, he's been an absolute beast. 34 catches the last four weeks, but uh, I think priced a little bit high for me this week at 7,100. Yeah, I don't, I mean, he's got basically a wide receiver game log. He um, does. So, but yeah, it's, just like every week, I'm not going to prioritize tight end. Do you play George Kittle a little cheaper at six thousand? Is that a, is that a price you can get around, or are you gonna you gonna drop down in the four thousands? No, I'd like to. I'm going to keep going. Just there's the uncertainty of him just like just being back, and uh, I'm good. If you if you told me right now, you guarantee me that Kittle plays fifty snaps, I'd play him in every lineup. But I don't think that he played twenty eight snaps last week. I just think there's enough. He's good. He had ninety two yards, and I think he's so far and away the best option in offense, yeah. but I just don't know if they push him enough at the price to, to, to blame. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. They definitely shouldn't. I don't even know if he should be playing. He, yeah, he shouldn't be playing. It's hard because, and Shanahan said it, it's like, how do I tell all the other guys on the team that Kittle's healthy, but he's too important to play? Like, to not play. So it's right. like, he's healthy. He, he's like one of the healthier guys we have, so he's going to go out there and play and he wants to play. I get it. And, um, you know, if I'm running a team, that's probably the type of guys I want out there too, but, you know, the guys that want to play, but, um, probably shouldn't. Um, yeah. I get it. So what what do you do down in the four thousands? I like uh, I like Noah Fant and Mike Gesecki. I think the most down here. But uh, who 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 you like a tight end? Gesecki was the guy that I went to. Um, Tua likes to throw to him, and yeah. there's no yeah. Fitz magic that's going to yep. come out. So uh... the Fitz magic last week was awesome. By the way, <sighs> Man. it was so that was so cool. Like the Raiders just can butcher things like nobody else. Like it's just amazing how team the players change, the coaches change, but it's just the Raiders messing stuff up late. But uh, that was an awesome. That was an awesome comeback. Yeah, um, yeah. Those two jumped out at me. Uh, Irv Smith, not as bad. I mean, yeah. Irv Smith seems like he's underpriced every week. He doesn't get like a ton of targets, but like when every single one of them becomes a touchdown, then like. And he had uh, and he had nine targets last week. Yeah, but it was the first. That's time true. Yeah, five, he finally so did. Like, it's first time over five. So your, your point on targets is right. He's just not been a targeted guy, but offense that should do whatever they want against Troy is a matter of the the touchdown passes go to him or Thielen in the red zone. Right. Um, 
Austin Hooper's obviously going to take a step back because they actually have wide receivers this week, but that uh, 15 targets, but he only, it was like 15 targets for what he finished with. Oh, he ended up with 71 71 yards. yards, Yeah. The the crazy thing about that was like, there were a lot of, we talked about DFS Twitter. There was a lot of DFS Twitter people that bet on Hooper's over catches and, and receiving yards and receptions and targets or whatever it was. And it was over by like 10 Oh seven in the morning. It was, (laughs) The first, like, five plays, like, four of them went to him. And it was like, oh, everybody's catching their bets. So I yep. was cracking me up. Because that was one of those things that, like, everybody that plays DFS noted that, you know, they have no receivers. And the books didn't really adjust it that much. I think it was – the over was, like, two and a half on some sites or three and a half. Some bumped it up. And he was over, like, within ten minutes. It was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, the, his original receiving yard prop, I know, was 29 and a half. <laughs> and he was definitely over that in the first right. drive. So it was, uh, it was nice. Uh, I just think, I mean, I think Fant, you know, is finishing the season well. He has 68 and 65 yards last couple. He's a guy that we always think is talented. Um, apparently, Jerry Judy can't catch a football. So maybe uh, maybe they go. He had six drops last week. Six. I don't think Devontae Adams has six drops in his life. Like, it, uh, it, that's six. not true. Adam, Adams was a was a dropper early in his career. He doesn't drop the ball anymore. You're right. The he was a dropper no. early on. But, like, Judy had six drops last, last week. Like, that's oh, nuts. But... It's amazing uh, had, that, like, after four, he kept getting passes thrown to him. Yes, there's that also. And, and Fant's 4,400. He had 20 targets last two weeks. I think he's definitely very live. But you mentioned with Gusecki, I think Tua just kind of relies on him. And you, he, you can see that, uh, you know, since Tua started, he's just a lot more active in the offense. Top 50 yards three games in a row. I think those are the two guys down here that uh, that I like the most. Yeah. Do you think if Judy played for the Packers, he'd never play again for them after dropping six passes? Never, never. There's no way he'd drop more than three because Rodgers wouldn't go back right. to him, Yeah, but... that's a good point. Oh man, can you imagine the looks he would have got? I just, I like Judy. He gets open, like his route running is mm-hmm. beautiful to watch. But like six He's drops, good. like that was he had so many targets, it was crazy. But yeah, a lot of guys that had you're right. You make a good point. Though. A lot of guys had drops earlier in their career. That Jerry Rice had a lot of drops his rookie year, and I don't think dropped a pass again after that. And we mentioned <laughs> Adams. You're right, he dropped a bunch of balls, and now like everything close he catches. So, yeah, um, there is that. Is there any any tight ends in, in the super cheap range that you like? Um. None that like jumped out that I can think of them now. Like the everybody else is just kind of a guy. And um, if if, uh, if if Hunter Henry sits and Keenan Allen sits, I think Steven Anderson. If you really need to save money at twenty six hundred, is the only guy down here that I really like could could talk myself into. He had six targets last week. Uh, Henry didn't play. He was four for forty eight. Because um, everybody played Parham. Everybody played Parham. Um, yeah. <laughs> Him. Uh, if Henry doesn't play and Allen doesn't play, I could just, if you wanted to save a bunch of money, that's the one play I could see kind of getting down here with. That's fair. That's again the game it. that like I just didn't want any part of. <laughs> I have no idea what's gonna happen in that game. Like I don't and yeah. anybody that tells you they do is like it's, it's full of it because we don't know it's gonna be Kansas City's probably not gonna play anybody, and you know, does do the Chargers just, like light that up or they just kinda right. want to go to the go to go to the offseason? I just don't it, it's been such a weird year for the Chargers, but and they have so many guys banged up too. Like we we talk about Mike Williams, a receiver. He's five thousand. He had ten targets last week. But again, I just this game is just not one that I'm really focusing on. Either. Totally. Uh, there's a couple of cheap defenses I like uh, this week. But uh, who do you like at defense? The Jets. It's one of them. Twenty three hundred against Cam Newton. Bring it. Jets have seven sacks. Last yeah. Week. New England's allowed twelve sacks. Cam Newton is not gonna and shouldn't play this whole game. Cam Newton can't throw the ball more than like 12 yards right now. It's, it's kind of hard to watch because I mean, Cam was really good in the past and with the Super Bowl and all that, but uh, that offense is a mess. They want to get out of there. And if you, you're probably going to get some Jared Stidham in this game too, which, you know, if I'm playing a defense, I, I like that also. Yeah. I'm a, I didn't even look at anybody else. The only other one down that range is, is the Browns at 2,500 against Pittsburgh. Sure. Um, if you want to talk about to have to win and you want to talk about motivation, the Browns against Mason Rudolph is probably as much motivation as human beings could have to um, get to the quarterback. That's fair. Uh, we, won't, we won't get into that whole situation, but uh, they have 10 sacks last four weeks, and I think that um, I think they want to kill Mason Rudolph. I think that's a good call. I, yeah. I didn't realize they were that cheap. I didn't either, and I looked at them. Like, those, those, like, those two stuck out to me yeah. r- right off the page. I think I'm going to go most lines with those two. If you're going a little more expensive, I think the Colts against Jacksonville would make a lot of sense at 3,900, but hard to pay that when you get some pretty usually we're like you know the 2500 are cheaper we're like oh we could see this is working out if it gets lucky but like those are two options i actually kind of like this week the, yeah the me too so it's hard to get um i think seattle against the niners makes sense at 3000 they have 10 sacks last two weeks the niners have allowed nine sacks last two weeks i think cj bethard 
is way better at not making mistakes than Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins, as we talked about before, is um, irrationally confident. Which is, <laughs> it's just like he may he thinks he can just do stuff that he can't. Yeah. Which is great when you want to play a defense. So I don't I don't like the defense quite as much as against CJ because I think CJ is a lot safer. I don't he probably doesn't make the upside throws. Kind of like we talked about Mullins, like the poor man's Jameis Winston and how he plays, but. Um, I think the, C- the Seahawks uh, make sense uh, at 3,000. The Niners are just kind of – their offense is just banged up right yeah. now. It has been all year. Um, that's kind of the – those are kind of the only ones I really liked. I mean, you can go Baltimore against Cincy, but 4,200, it's hard for me to spend 2,000 more than the Jets and Browns. Imagine saying that, Scott. Yeah, I know. Imagine a week one where like, you know what? I think later this year I'm going to love the Jets and the Browns defense, especially against the Steelers and the Patriots. Yeah, in New England. Yeah, and in Pittsburgh. Is that the game like in Pittsburgh? That, that hasn't made sense in like 25 years. Yeah, years. ever actually. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, going to see those and Patriots offenses. But yeah, I think uh, I think most of my laps are going to have one of those two defenses and, and save the money because I think there's a lot, of, a lot of guys up top that I, I'd like to spend some money on this. Me week. too. Yeah, definitely. Week 17, uh, anything else that uh, you got you want to say? You got this on your mind here in this uh, 2021? No, it's uh, I'm ready for the playoffs. Yeah. I think I'd like to – I think that this week has a little more intrigue than most Week 17s do. But, yeah, I think that uh, by about halfway through here, I'm like, I'm <laughs> we, will, uh, we will be doing um, podcasts for the playoffs. That's correct, right? Yes. You're the boss here, so I just want to confirm that with you before I committed to that. <laughs> uh, we will be doing the playoffs all the way through the Super Bowl. So there's uh, – you know, DFS is uh, – the fun part about the playoffs now with DFS, that it just, it just keep, the past season keeps going. Like we're, we're getting extra, too, yeah. we get extra two games this week too mm-hmm. in the first uh, first round. Too, so we get six games in the wild card, which is like a, a pretty a pretty darn good slate. Like, yeah, uh, I usually like the four game uh, slates. We'll get that in championship weekend, but the six game slate will be will be fun to break down. Obviously, a lot of really good teams, really good players. So we'll be back at you uh, next Friday talking playoffs. Hope everybody has a really good week seventeen. Hope everybody has a happy new year, happy uh, 2021, as we're starting here on January 1st. Other than that, uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, I am at Scott Jenstead. Andrew is at Rotowire Andrew. If you could please rate and review the podcast, we could also appreciate that too. Other than that, hope everybody has a good weekend and take care.